right, week 11, uh, <clears throat> day one. We uh, got today off, gave us a little mental health day. Honestly, it was probably needed, much appreciated. Um, but my mental health obviously does surround a lot around exercise, so still went to the gym today. Um, getting close to the end of this fourth phase. Um, but today I did my dynamic warm up, uh, five, 10 minutes. Then I went right into it, did my barbell squat for five by five, barbell bench for five by five and a barbell row for five by five. Excuse me. Um, and what I wanted to talk about a little bit today was kind of the concept of D training, um, that we learned about. So kind of what happens like when we stop training, what we see is a decrease in our VO2 max usually, um, which is due to decreases in cardiac output, um, stroke volume and oxygen extraction. Also a slight increase in heart rate and a shift from slow to fast twitch fibers. And then also, um, you know, obviously there's a difference in someone who's been training for much longer compared to someone who is relatively untrained. Um, the person who's relatively untrained is going to detrain a lot faster than the person who has been training for quite some time. And then also talk about some adaptations, some muscle adaptations to anaerobic exercise. Um, as we know, anaerobic exercise is usually short duration, which is um, less than 30 seconds ish. Um, with high intensity efforts, it's heavily reliant on our PCR and glycolysis. Um, if you are anaerobically training for four to 10 weeks, you can see improvements anywhere between three to 25% in, in performance. So again, a more trained athlete is probably going to see something on the the lower side of that compared to someone who is more untrained. They're just going to see more results faster. However, they will take longer to recover from that effort. Um, so the changes in uh, muscle are going to be a little bit more dependent on the duration and the duration of intervals of exercise. So like a sprint, like the example in the, the PowerPoint sprint is 10 to 30 seconds and hit style training is 30 to 60 seconds. Um, both styles will improve our muscle buffer capacity. So again, that's gonna be um, an increase in mitochondria. So we're able to increase more um, energy, but therefore also increasing our ability to buffer that energy um, byproduct of acid. So we're actually able to get that out. Um, sprint training can be more inducive of hypertrophy, um, and kind of increases our PCR intermediates. Um, so since we're sprinting and it's a shorter duration, that pure 10 to 30 seconds of a, a full out sprint, um, we'll still see hypertrophy gains in our fast twitch muscle fibers. Um, and it'll increase a little bit of our PCR system effectiveness just because we're relying so heavily on that PCR um, system for sprints. It's that super quick energy, super fast, just like the fast switch muscles need. Whereas our HIT style training is going to be a little bit more intensive. We're going to keep everything kind of risen that entire time. It's high intensity interval training, as we know. Um, and that is going to be the thing that increases our mitochondrial biogenesis. Um, I don't hit train very often. Um, I think maybe during the summertime, I might experiment a little bit more with like hit, hit or some other type of like performance based training system. Um, not hundred percent positive yet, but we'll see how that goes.